100 dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is video number 15 in our series NerdDice.com where we build a tabletop role-playing management application using Ruby on Rails. And we are in the middle of trying to get a, a device set up so that users can authenticate and sign up for the site. Uh, you can see kind of the list of items we've already knocked out here. We've installed device, customized the device configuration for the app, uh, added UUID support and uh, generated the user model. We added pre and post login pages and then in our previous video, got device kind of did some patching based on some help from um, Go Rails and um, this um, better programming article here to patch it so that it works with Turbo. Uh, the other thing we noticed while we were doing this is that the form in its current state, and we're using Tailwind uh, for our styling framework here, is that this is hideous. Um, so I kind of bumped to the the top here, uh, fixed device views to work with Tailwind. Uh, the, the goal here is not pixel perfect UX styling. This is more along the lines of uh, just get it not hideous. Uh, so, but we're going to remedy that. And in doing so, we're gonna look at some of the device views that we um, generated and um, set up the ability to um, can kind of, th they'll show the different pages that we need to look at uh, as we do our, uh, our next step of this, which is going to be like browser driven uh, system tests and stuff like that to make sure that all this stuff works with the JavaScript and everything else. So uh, this is our application.html.erb, but if we go and look in Devi the device folder in the views here, we can see that there are, um, like for example, what, sessions new I think is, yeah, so the users sign in. So I think that's the sessions new um, item here. So sessions new, we have the email password, um, and then we're rendering a partial, a Rails partial here, so we can see shared these um, ugly um, jumbled items here don't have um, anything there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, get the uh, the code here between the starting and ending body tags. And we're gonna play around with it in Tailwind Play a little bit. So I'm gonna paste this in here and we can see that this is, um, see here, that's about what it looks like now. Um, so we will try to get that uh, working a bit better here. So um, the if we look at what was generated for our, uh, authenticated and welcome indexes here. So we have an H1 and it's in a div. So none of these are in div. So that might solve most of the battle there. If we go into the, uh, the main, section here you can see that it's already looking better um, it's not it's not great but that's uh, that, and especially the um, the form uh, there should have a, a border when it's not on focus uh, but that's that might get us most of the way there and we will try doing that to this page and see if that improves our user experience here so 
we were in devise sessions new. So we'll slap this in a div. Closing div tag and refresh. Yeah, that is a lot better. So that um, I think at least gets us the most of what we need there. The log in button we probably want to make a button rather than a, a link um, and then the links we probably want to style a bit but that um, let's go and div these up uh, what is our login yeah it just looks like a, so we'll we'll also um, Take a look at our welcome here. So we'll make it maybe three XL for these H twos. See that is already a little bit more distinguished here and then our button class Let's see if we can So we might just be able to throw in some, say, input type equals submit. And let's say, just fiddle around with this and get to something that I want and then talk through it. All right, so I've got something that looks reasonable here. I'll show an example of an unvisited link. buttons we've got links uh, still need a border on that input and then see when we focus it gives us what we need but um, otherwise it's not giving me um, any indication that that's a form field visually so let's at least get and see if we can get our styles into that submit button there.
So on our items here, Let's see if that gives me what I want. Back to there, so that gives us our button. Our button still works, which is what we want. And um, we'll at least do the first of the links here. That we got from our tailwind play. Let's see if that works. Like it did not. I'm gonna have to do HTML. Try it again. quickly look up the uh, link to helper. All right, so egg and my face were in alignment. Uh, this condition evaluates to false, so I was doing it correctly. I just need to do that. There. So now we go in and refresh, sign up, shows as visited, underlines and everything. Uh, so you can already see that this is getting kind of uh, wordy and repetitive and uh, everything. So uh, what I'm going to do, and I've kind of learned a little bit from doing some, I did a little bit of uh, tailwind on my uh, statelesscode.com website that was using uh, WordPress and um, it's kind of PHP and Tailwind. Uh, in Tailwind, you can, in your config, do directives. Uh, so apply text blue 600, hover underline, all that stuff. Uh, the problem with that is that, like, the, the ease of use of Tailwind is like your ability to do stuff like what we're doing in Tailwind Play and get rapid iterations and feedback on what you're doing. The problem with the directives is that every time you do that, you need to rebuild your um, your tailwind. So it winds up um, being a kind of slow and not great way to do that. There is, for Rails, what I think I'm going to use is my middle ground here, and I'm going to throw this into um, a helper. So if we go to our apps, helpers, right now we've got the application helper, which is the scope that we'd wanna do this for. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a folder here. Tailwind. And then we'll say
So we'll have something here like, and it'll still be in the application helper. And we'll have something along the lines of def, we'll say, go back over here. I don't think I actually even need a an item here. So we'll take our classes that we have. In our ERB file here. For now, we'll we'll probably like make this a um, an array or something to make it. Um, actually, I'll, I'll go and do that now. So we'll um, go here. New file. This will be in application helper. And we'll have a def join classes. Class array. Actually, split. Split. HTML safe. Then this can become an array. Let's make sure that we're able to compile here. I'll, I'll try calling it here. So let's take this and make it See if that gives us an error. Undefined local variable or method. Let's make sure that our application helper. A look 
got it. All right, let me, we'll call this Tailwind Helper. And then in application helper, we'll include Tailwind Helper. Tailwind helper. And we're still not. work if I just throw it in application helper. So we'll, for the time being, put this here, put this here. I should really be doing this test driven. Got national uninitialized constant. We'll get rid of that for the time being. Goal is working but ugly. Actually, it's join. Try it again. Hey, we've got our bug. That way now, if I want to change this and make it red, just do that, refresh, and get very quick feedback on it. So the idea is working there. We will, um, I guess now is a good time to do that. Um, that test um, helper testing here. So if we go to our test helpers and we will um, I guess we'll throw this in application helper for now. second here to research the idiomatic way to do this. All right, so we've got application helper test here. So we'll
this is Success button works as intended. just to see what it returns. running it. It does look like we have the, let me just make sure that this is what we want here. This should fail. And it does. See if I can move this. To the yeah, I'll I'll work on refactoring it once we have more stuff here. So I'll delete this. do it via the command line. I don't want to move it to the trash. Got an application helper and an application helper test. That's gone, that's gone. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the what did we call? We haven't have a name for it yet. Link works as intended, and we want that to equal this value here. Got 
failure or error because we don't have the method defined. Now it'll fail. Implement it. Should now be passing. is and then we should be able to apply that to all of our classes here Get back to our tests here. Still passing our sign in link. Has all these things showing up. And then we just need to make these similar modifications to our other files here. So we'll start with the, the divs. You get the idea, so I'll, I'll just do it once or twice, and then we don't need to deal with the ma mailer, but um, we'd throw the div in here, close the div, any sort of button here, so we can see f.submit, we'll throw in that similar Success button class. So now our email confirmation. Oh, I have broken it. Double commas. There we go. Our standard button here. It's because I put it in the wrong place. There, we've got a button. And we are getting a, the form boxes are showing up here. I don't know why they're not showing up in the Tailwind play, but um, we can always modify those later. But that's the, the idea. Um, I'll just 
go through and do the rest of these and then if anything noteworthy comes up I'll talk through it and then we'll review the git diff before I commit. So one note here, I'm going to kind of do a pseudo namespace on this. So tailwinds instead of success button I'm going to do tw success button replace it everywhere. Do the same thing with standard link it everywhere. Rerun my tests. All right, and then continue on in our other stuff. I'm going to, while I'm at it, so the The welcome page so that those repeated um, classes and all that stuff I'm also going to move into tailwind methods I'll um, kind of implement them and talk through them and you get the idea of how this is gonna work so all right a couple of notes since I've been paused here so um, I had let me want to delete the whole class so here in this tailwind helper so I, I had had that not working but upon application reload it does work so um, that method of um, have a tailwind helper and then put the tailwind stuff in there that does work you just need to restart the um, the server in order for it to to work so um, there are a couple other things that came up so one of them is that the logout so if we go to um, authenticated uh, this logout I don't want this button to be a success button so I'm going to to go in and um, essentially um, take this refactor out the stuff that's common to a button and then uh, create essentially like a cancel button that I'll use for the logout action uh, there's also here if I go to Users edit. There's a cancel my account button here, and if I go and do this now, um, if you look at the the view here, registrations edit. So this cancel my account button here. Uh, the data confirm are you sure even if I I'll, I'll make this um, at the class here just so it looks like a button but it's supposed to confirm and it's not going to so I'm gonna take a look at that so um, we can see here confirm are you sure that will not work so I go and try to do that and um, it's um, not working there um, and it's not um, redirecting but the one of the things we want to do is make sure that that doesn't turn into a no confirm sort of situation so in my um, getting started with rails 7 we'll refer to this again app use posts 
show. So right now it's just data confirm. Are you sure that would work for the um, the Rails UJ, UJS from previous versions, but it won't work for Turbo. So if I go now and um, replace this, it should confirm. See if I can go back to the users edit here. Oh my, I actually did destroy that user. Um, invalid to sign up again. We've got a confirmation link. Go and confirm. Now log in. Signed in successfully. So this canceled my account. Let's make sure I saved it. So now you can see the local host confirm there. Um, are you sure? So that data confirm is working now. And then this button should not be a success style button. And then back in authenticated, This logout also shouldn't be a um, a button of that kind. So, um, or it should be like a I'll go over to tell and play. So something along the lines of this, where it's more like a um, let me tweak it, but like a gray button that um, takes you to an action. I'll, I'll I don't like the um, I think it's too. Let's fix the hover here. Make it like 500. And then text. Go down to two hundred. Yeah, that kind of inverses it on hover. I think that works well. So we will make that our cancel button. I added a border here, uh, and I think I'm going to add the border back to the the main button as well, but let's at least get this going. So into our Tailwind helper, I'll start trying to group the buttons together as I'm going to shortly get those out of their own file or into their own file. Assert statement here. Uh, we'll be back to 
to a failing test. Oops. Or an error test. Oh, we're like not even compiling. assert equal statement matters. All right, so we're back to the error and we'll just take this Make it pass. And our helper. And you can see that there is already an opportunity to refactor this. We should be able to now make that a cancel button on our registrations edit, or not registrations, the authenticated index. And the welcome index. to nerd dice, go to the root path. You can see now we've got that logout style authenticated. We've got that it works. Now we need to treat those as add the standard link. Um, stylings to those which are in my shared links here so that's in these links and this link should now be back in here and I'm not married to any of these particular styles just Again, getting something that works here. And then log in. I want to go to users edit. So this cancel my account button will back into our tailwind helper test. Oops. We'll call this an alert button. going to be red 500 
800. Should have a failing a new error now for that. Go in and implement it. those there for a second so I can paste the implementation here. Save it, rerun the tests. We're passing Need to change the registrations item there to use the alert button. Re refresh. Actually, don't mind that. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. We will close to the right. As more stuff shows up, we'll fix it. Uh, let's take a look now at our get status and okay now we'll run rubocop and cringe nine offenses but eight are autocorrectable Tailwind helper. So line length. output safety because we are not taking any input on these join classes methods here. How do I RuboCop disable comment? I've done it in nerd dice before. I'll just pause and do it. All right, so I've got the that cop disabled here. Up to four now. Oh, 
enable afterwards. All right, down to two, and they're both related to string length in the our line length here. Assuming that was even my offense. Oh well. It does make it easier to read. Probably creating new offenses by indenting like that. At least they'll probably be autocorrectable. Yeah. All right. No offenses. All right, I think we can call this a first iteration on this. We um, fails test system test. All right, that is working. I will now go and get everything, write my commit message. All right, I've got my commit message here. I will close things out. Push to the remote. And watch the, the build here. I um, just noticed that on this commit here, some checks failed on it. So the build passed, but the uh, coveralls uh, coverage decreased on it. So hopefully we'll take a look at that and monitor it try to get it back up it's probably the the turbo device controller that is the culprit on that um, I will pause and let this finish all right we've got a successful build and a successful coveralls check Go into our issue mark. This subtask is done. Go into the project and do the same. And we'll take a look at signing up and confirming in the next video. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.